Hi, my name is Scott. I'm a software engineer for Synadia, and today I'm going to show you a synchronous and asynchronous publishing example using the NAS client for Java. So on my right, you can see that I've already started the server and I've also already created the stream. So jumping right into the code, we are going to connect to the server. We are going to make a Jetstream context and we are going to publish 100 messages in the loop. So in this case, we are going to use the synchronous publishing or blocking publishing call. And so what we do is we publish and we wait for the server to acknowledge and then we move on to the next message. So the Jetstream is designed that we publish a message and the server lets us know or acknowledges the fact that it has received the message and has done what we've asked of it to do. So that may mean it's replicated it, or that may mean it's trimmed the stream to have the correct number of messages, or it's or the correct number of bytes. Whatever it is, the server has acknowledged, says I've done what you've asked, and the message is, is taken care of. Here you go, here's your acknowledgement. And it returns us this published acknowledgement object. So I'm just gonna run this and I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna tell us we're about to publish and I'm gonna go do it, wait for it, and then I'll print it out. Okay. So I was telling you I'm gonna publish, got the acknowledgement, and then moving on. Just publish, wait, publish, wait, publish, wait. So next I'm going to talk about asynchronous, but I also want to talk about why you may use synchronous versus asynchronous. So let's talk about synchronous. First of all, it's a little slower because what you're doing is you're waiting every single time. But this may be important to you because you want to be able to know that that publish is completed before you move on to the next message. And that's the most common reason for using the blocking model. So the asynchronous model, you still will know that the server has acknowledged, but because you're doing it out of band of sorts or in a different thread even, it takes more to manage the small amount of failure cases. Right, it, it rarely ever fails, but you, you generally have to write a lot of code to handle the failure case. So it's just a little more complicated because you may need to republish. Here, if you get a, if the publish fails, you can know and you haven't moved on and you can publish, republish that message right away. On asynchronous, if the order doesn't matter so much, well, that's not a big deal and you wanna get speed, well, great. Those are the reasons you would pick asynchronous publishing over synchronous publishing. So I'm just gonna jump into the, the asynchronous example. So in this example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna publish asynchronously, let me use that method, and it returns a future that on its own is handling getting the acknowledgement. And I'm going to collect all those futures and then when I'm done with the publish loop, then I'm going to handle check and see that I've got the, the acknowledgement from the servers. So let's run this and see what the output is. So this output is different. You see, I have all the published methods, messages, excuse me, and then in the, Next loop, I have all the acknowledgements. So looking at this code, if for some reason this, this specific publish failed, I'd have to, I may want to republish it. So I'm gonna have to keep track of the messages in a different way. I'm gonna have to uh, maybe have, a, have another list of what the message was that I sent so I could resend it. In, versus in the first one, I really haven't moved on so I could have error handling logic right underneath and say, oh, I know what the message is. 
I just tried to publish it, it didn't work, try to do it again, or maybe save it for later, or whatever you want to do. But in the publish async, you've done all the printing up in one, uh, I'm sorry, all the publishing up in one spot, and you've done all the handling of the acknowledgements in another spot. So again, I'm gonna say that this is a, this has the ability to publish more messages uh, but again, there's some more complexity handling the acknowledgements. Another thing you can do with async is you could use multi-threads. So you could publish in one thread and handle the acknowledgements in the other thread. Now, in that case, you're going to need something to communicate that there's a message available or there's a future available that's waiting to check its, its acknowledgement. Uh, a typical way you might do that is using a link blocking queue. So this is just a Java con uh, construct, uh, not something I'm making up. Let's just get rid of that. So in this loop, instead of putting it into a collection, you are just going to maybe offer it to the queue. Okay. And this can be, I'm sorry, offer to the queue. Offer the future to the queue, yeah. Um, and this will be running in one thread and maybe in some other thread, you're gonna have something that pulls or takes from the queue. Okay, and that, that's beyond the scope of this example, um, but that's another option. And still, you might wanna be able to, you might uh, manage, you're going to have to know what the message you published was um, so you can handle failures. Again, it doesn't fail very often, if ever, but you always have to write code to handle those failures. Anyway, so that is the publish uh, synchronous and asynchronous example. Um, I will catch you on the next example.